plans to further ease England's coronavirus lockdown have been put on hold because of a rise in the rate of infections. Boris Johnson says it's now time to squeeze the brake pedal on any further relaxation of the rules, warning that the country shouldn't be complacent. The Prime Minister now says face coverings should be worn in more places where people can come into contact with others they don't know. Bowling alleys, skating rinks and casinos won't be reopening tomorrow as planned and certain beauty treatments involving the face won't be allowed for at least two weeks. Wedding receptions of up to 30 people and indoor musical and theatrical performances won't be allowed either and the public will have to wear face coverings in cinemas, museums and galleries as well as places of worship from August the 8th. England's chief medical officer, Professor Chris Whitty, says the country has probably reached the limits of what can be done in opening up society with infections now rising. Here's our political correspondent, Leila Nathu. Poised to stage a performance for the first time in months, this venue in London was due to open its doors tomorrow. 80 seats, normally 180, and now we can't open. And that's a huge financial hit for us here at the Phoenix. Businesses still closed across England have been waiting for the next phase of unlocking to begin. But now, with cases of coronavirus on the rise again, the Prime Minister pressing pause. At every point, uh, I have said our plan to reopen the society and the economy is conditional, that it relies on continued progress against the virus, and we would not hesitate to put the brakes on if required. With those numbers creeping up, our assessment is that we should now squeeze that brake pedal. And so? On Saturday, the 1st of August, you'll remember, we had hoped to reopen in England a number of the higher risk settings that had remained closed. And today, I'm afraid we're postponing those changes for at least a fortnight. Boris Johnson acknowledging the disruption this will cause. I know that the steps that we're taking will be a real blow to many people, and I'm really, really sorry about that, but we simply cannot take the risk. That apology aimed at people like Luke and Vicky, whose wedding reception in Chorley, already slimmed down, has now been cancelled. You have dreams of what your wedding's going to look like, and them dreams have already been shattered. Um, so once we heard about this a week before our wedding, then, it was, yeah, it was devastating and obviously very upsetting. Although employers are still being encouraged to think about how to get people back to work and advice on shielding will still come to an end, face coverings will now be required in more places like galleries, cinemas and museums. How worried are you that this is going to turn into a surge? And why is it that we find ourselves in this position? Because the government's message has been unclear and inconsistent, or are we all to blame? Uh, we're now seeing uh, a, a warning light on the dashboard. It is right to respond in the way that we are. The answer lies with all of us uh, following that guidance. But from a man who's always struck a cautious tone, a stark warning about the challenges to come. We have probably reached near the limits or the limits of what we can do in terms of opening up society. So what that means potentially, is if we wish to do more things in the future, we may have to do less of some other things. And these will be difficult trade-offs. As well as juggling what's happening nationally, targeted local restrictions, like those imposed in parts of Northern England last night, are also here to stay. Scotland's First Minister now advising against all but essential travel to the areas affected. We see this as being an important and necessary precaution. Our advice is, of course, designed to minimise the risk of spread from England into Scotland, but it is also designed to assist people in these parts of England. And Labour questioning how the message was relayed. Right decision, very poor communication, that's got to improve. We're going to see more of these situations over the coming weeks and months. The government needs to learn the lesson of the last 24 hours, which is improve the communication. Still empty spaces, still tables unfilled. The government says it's now up to us to stick closely to the rules so lockdown easing can resume. Leila Nathu, BBC News. Well, four million people living in communities in northern England now have to abide by strict new measures, which came into effect today people living in Greater Manchester and in parts of East Lancashire and West Yorkshire can no longer visit another household in their home or garden. 
Support bubbles are exempt from this rule and the police will have the power of enforcement. You can still go to pubs, restaurants and shops in the affected areas as well as places of worship, but only with your own household. The tougher rules follow a jump in new infections in the past week in almost every part of Greater Manchester. As our North of England correspondent Judith Moritz reports now from Oldham. In central Manchester tonight, you could hardly tell that restrictions have been tightened. The bars were bursting. But under the new rules in this area, socialising with people from other households isn't allowed. And scenes like this may be upsetting for those who've had to cancel their plans. In Oldham, the Ali family were supposed to be celebrating Eid at home with visiting relatives. The food was all prepared. Now the party would be illegal. The guests aren't coming. It's devastating, to be honest. Uh, like a few hours before Eid starts, you're getting told, oh, no, you can't do anything. It's really upsetting. We, we did expect more. We do think we've been targeted, but we can't really. Do you think that this timing was chosen because of Eid to stop family gatherings, large gatherings? We, we, yeah, we do feel like it's day, quite you... unfair, but... Um, it's just, we feel like it's been quite insensitive of them, of the people making the decision. It's the short, the short notice, notice that's really just triggered people. Before. And it's not just celebrations at home which are affected, but the chance to party elsewhere with friends. At night, I would have probably gone out with my mates, out to Wimsor Road or wherever in Manchester, <laughs> but it looks like them plans have changed as well, going to have to stay inside. Over in Bradford, community elders aren't questioning the restrictions, but are angry at the last-minute timing. I paid you a scenario. It's 9.30 on Christmas Eve. Uh, you've put the turkey in the oven and then you see a Twitter feed which is telling you that Christmas is cancelled. So, um, yeah, disappointing. Um, uh, anger at the, uh, at the lack of notice, really. Here in Oldham, the infection rate has risen more sharply in the last week than anywhere else. It's now more than 10 times the average for England. And there have been sharp rises in other northern communities too. Local leaders say they accept the restrictions. But they've criticised the government for its communication, saying local people feel confused and distressed. We would strongly recommend uh, to the government that at the time a public or media statement is made, affecting any uh, area across the country, it must then follow that detailed information is immediately available at the same time as the making of that statement in a, in a public arena. <laughs> There's been criticism from both the police and politicians of those young people who are continuing to socialise in groups and concern about increasing infection rates amongst young adults. In Manchester city centre tonight, that met with a mixed response. I think if you look around, you can probably see why we've got a spike in Manchester because people have really been like socialising and I think it's hard to stop people doing that as, as soon as you open up the restaurants and the bars. So I understand it um, and I'm currently adhering to it. So I haven't got a problem at all. I understand the government and I trust the government. We're staying in the same house tonight and like yeah, we've for a been few staying, days. We've yeah. been staying together for like the past few days. So you, you know that it's against the rules for people from different houses. Yeah, you know, I know, we, but we, yeah, we, but we, we came up yeah, before lockdown. Exactly. We were all together and then lockdown happened. We are quite a re socially responsible generation. You know, yeah. we want to make sure that our parents are safe and our we, grandparents we, we are, are safe. We are all worried as well. Like, yeah. we're worried we, as well. None we of have... us are not worried. Eden 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 Back in Oldham, the Ali family may not be able to celebrate Eid as they wanted, but they're not letting that stop them from staying in touch. Even online, they're determined to be together. Judith Moritz, BBC News, Oldham. In the last 24-hour period, another 120 people have died after testing positive for the coronavirus in the UK, taking the total number of deaths to 46,119. The UK's seven-day rolling average is 753. And you can see from the chart that cases have been rising slightly in the past week. Scientists don't know whether that's because of more or better testing and if it's the beginning of a resurgence in infections, as we've been seeing elsewhere in Europe. Two dozen areas are now on Public Health England's watch list due to the rise in infection rates, as our science editor David Shukman explains. Relaxing the lockdown is not going to happen as quickly as many had hoped. We're not on the brink of returning to the toughest restrictions. The scale of the disease is too low for that. But the virus does seem, once again, to be reaching a growing number of people. The latest estimates for infections in England 
which are always higher than the cases actually confirmed by testing, show a rise from 2,000 a day at the end of June to 3,000 in mid-July to 4,200 more recently. And one government adviser speaking personally says he's concerned. I think we need to be much more cautious. We need to adhere to best practice. And I do worry that if it gets out of control, it could trigger another second wave quite early, which we really don't want. And if this had happened in October, uh, I think that would have been an, an unstoppable event. We're nowhere near the scale of infections we saw at the height of the pandemic back in March and April. But there are now more than 20 areas of concern, including those in the northwest that had new restrictions imposed on them last night. Top of that list is Oldham, along with Trafford and Salford. Over the border in Wales, Wrexham has a relatively high 61 cases per 100,000 people, but that is down a bit from the week before. In Scotland, where there's a low level of infections, Glasgow has had three new cases over the last seven days. Likewise in Northern Ireland, where there's a handful of cases in Lisbon and Castle Ray. This comes at a time of changing messages from the government on how to keep a safe distance and whether to stay at home. Experts in behaviour say a much clearer guide is needed. The government strategy seems to be uh, haphazard and responsive rather than strategic. It's leaving people confused as to what they should and shouldn't be doing and confused as to what's coming next. One measure we will see more of is face coverings. They'll be required in more places. A reminder in these more nervous times of how until there's a vaccine, there aren't many ways to stop the virus from spreading. David Shookman, BBC News. In Wales, swimming pools, gyms, leisure centres and indoor play areas will be allowed to reopen from the 10th of August. Up to 30 people can meet outdoors and children under 11 won't have to social distance from Monday. Licensed wedding venues can also reopen from Monday, but receptions will need to be outdoors. Wales's First Minister Mark Drakeford admitted that today's new lockdown restrictions in the north of England had given him pause for thought. Well, in a moment, we'll hear from our political correspondent, Leila Nathu, at Westminster, but first to our health correspondent, Lauren Moss, who's here with me. Uh, Lauren, the chief medical officer, he says we may have reached the limits uh, of the kind of easing that we can go through while this virus is still out there. And there's plenty of evidence giving him the feeling that that should be the case. That's right, Chris Whitty said the idea that we could open everything back up again while keeping the virus under control was clearly wrong and he said there will be difficult trade-offs ahead. And we were warned all along that this could happen as we emerge from lockdown, as human behaviour changes, people are mixing more together and that's when the virus spreads. But as we heard in David's piece there, the rate of infection is, is still nowhere near what it was during the peak of the pandemic, but cases are climbing up in the UK by around about a quarter to what they were two weeks ago. And tonight, the World Health Organization's Emergency Committee has called the pandemic a once-in-a-century health crisis. It heard that many countries that believe they were past the worst of it are now grappling with fresh outbreaks. So experts here will be keeping a close eye on what's happening elsewhere in Europe. 1,300 new confirmed cases in France in the last 24 hours, 1,500 in Spain, more than 800 here. And scientists say we are close to the tipping point at which infection could increase here. It's not known yet just how effective the local lockdowns and tougher restrictions will be. In Leicester, it does seem to be working. Those case numbers are coming back down. But it is still early days introducing those measures. And if cases do go up, as they may indeed do, the number of things that we'll be able to do will come down. OK, Lauren, many thanks. Lauren Moss there. Let's talk now to uh, Leila Nathu, who's at Westminster, our political correspondent. Leila, um, in the final analysis, um, it, the easing of the lockdown, it is a political decision. Uh, and it's a, obviously a difficult one that the government has to take in the circumstances. Yeah, I think the picture is definitely now more complex in terms of these now competing aims of trying to still suppress the virus while opening up. We know now that we have reached 
the point where we are about as far as we could go if we want to pursue both of those. And I think the difficulty is, is that the message is now getting more nuanced. It was just a fortnight ago that Boris Johnson was talking about a path back to a, a significant normality by Christmas. There was a bit more of a sense of optimism, a bit more of a path, a sense of a way forward. Now you have concerns about a spike in infections in Europe and the impact of that. You've got different restrictions being reimposed and released in different areas across the country. And then you have this rolling back off the unlocking across England. So I think the picture is definitely more tricky. And I think the government has always, always, already, has always said that everything would be dependent on keeping infection levels down. They've said they would have to react quickly to an evolving picture. But I think as we start to see the effects of unlocking play out, we know that will be many more difficult choices to come. Okay, Leila, thank you for that. Leila Nafu there at Westminster.